Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. We have 10 inverse of 3 and 10 inverse of 1 half, and we're going to find the difference of these two numbers. Now, 10 inverse can also be replaced with arctangent, which is what it means. It's not the reciprocal, it's just the inverse function or inverse tangent. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one alpha, and I'm going to call this one beta. Because tan inverse of 3 basically represents an angle whose tangent equals 3, right? But we've got to be careful because there is something we need to talk about, which we'll do towards the end of the first method. So now we're looking for alpha minus beta, in other words. But what does tangent inverse of 3 being equal to alpha mean? Let's go ahead and write that down as an equation. That's what you usually do first. So 10 inverse of 3 equals alpha. If we tan both sides, that's going to give us tangent alpha is equal to 3. So that's basically what it means. And tan inverse of 1 half is beta, which means tangent beta is 1 half. So in other words, we have two angles whose tangents are given, and we're supposed to find their difference. How many solutions are there going to be? Is the answer unique? If you think about this carefully, this is actually a numerical value, right? So let's see what happens. Since I have tangent alpha and tangent beta, and I'm looking for alpha minus beta, I'm going to go ahead and tangent alpha minus beta. So by using the difference formulas, right, we can write this as tangent alpha minus tangent beta divided by 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. This is the difference formula, and the sum formula is very similar. Now let's go ahead and plug in all the values. From here we get tangent, at least uh, at this point we don't know what it is, but we do know tangent alpha is equal to 3, and then tangent beta is 1 half from the given equations, and plus... 1 plus, we're going to get 3 times 1 half, which is 3 halves. Now, the value is going to be a little surprising for you, hopefully. 3 minus 1 half is 5 halves, right? And 1 plus 3 halves is also 5 halves. So this ratio is actually 1. Now, take a moment and think about this and what it means. Tangent alpha minus beta equals 1. Isn't that awesome? We got a real nice value. Of course, it's been arranged that way, but... Where do we go from here? Well, our goal, if you remember, is to solve for alpha minus beta, right? So how do we do that from here? Easy. Can we find an angle or angles whose tangent equals 1? And between 0 and 2 pi, there are actually two values. So we have to be careful. From here, alpha minus beta can be pi over 4. Obviously, it's in the first quadrant, but it can also be in the third quadrant because in the third quadrant tangent is positive right you need to know that so make sure you know your unit circle well okay that's important now we got these two values what are we going to do with them is that are those the answers can there be more than one so here's the problem something that we need to talk about the range of the inverse tangent function so if you are familiar with hopefully with the range of a function then it's basically the, the set of the output values, in other words, tangent inverse of x, needs to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. We kind of need that distinction because if you think about the unit circle, since we're going to have the same values between uh, first and third quadrants and the second and fourth are going to have the same, we kind of need to limit or restrict the range of this function so we get unique values. Because if you think about the graph of the tangent function, you're going to have, you know, infinitely many values that are equal to the same thing. In other words, if you do a horizontal line, it's going to fail it miserably, right? So that's why we kind of need to start at negative pi over 2 and go to pi over 2 from there. And of course, when we're doing this, this is going to be negative pi over 2, and this is going to be pi over 2. We kind of have to move this way in the positive direction. Make sense? Okay. So basically, any point that we have here is going to correspond to a single value 
between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that's the range of our function. So what happens in this case then? Tan inverse of 3, which is I replace x with 3, is going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then the tangent inverse or inverse tangent of 1 half is also going to be the same. But I need to do a little bit of focus focus here. So since this is going to be between those values, what happens if I multiply everything by negative 1? The boundaries are not going to change, but our expression is actually going to be negated. Make sense? Because the opposite of negative pi over 2 is pi over 2 and vice versa. Now we can go ahead and add these inequalities. Obviously, you cannot subtract two inequalities, but you can add them as long as they have the same direction. And in this case, we get negative pi for this difference on the left, and on the right, the upper bound is just going to be pi. So in other words, if you have the difference of two tan inverses, then that difference has to be greater than negative pi and less than pi. It can't be outside these boundaries for obvious reasons. So 5 pi over 4 obviously is greater than pi, so it's just not going to work. And obviously we do have a single value. We should have a single value, and that is going to be pi over 4. Let's go ahead and write that down as our conclusion. 10 inverse 3 minus 10 inverse 1 half is equal to pi over 4, and that's such a special angle. All right? So for the second method, I'm going to use a really cool method called complex numbers. And let's see how this plays out. If you like complex numbers, go ahead and check out my other channel, which is A plus BI. Easy to remember, right? So now we're going to go ahead and set Z equal to A plus BI. If theta is the argument of Z, then that can be found by 10 inverse of B over A. Why? Because 10 argument of Z or tangent theta from here is going to be b over a. If theta is the argument, then tangent theta is found by dividing the imaginary part by the real part, and boom, it's that easy. Make sense? But this is a super duper awesome formula. Let's see how we can use it in our example. So now we do need two complex numbers whose tangents are 3 and 1 half. So suppose, and you can obviously use different numbers, suppose z is equal to 1 plus 3i, and w, which is another complex number, is 2 plus i. Have you noticed why I picked those numbers? Because if you look at the argument of z and its tangent, you're going to get 3 over 1, which is 3, and you're going to get 1 half for w. Make sense? So argument of z by this formula is going to be 10 inverse of 3, and argument of w is going to be 10 inverse of 1 half. And guess what we're going to do? Since we're trying to find the difference, we do need their difference. So let's go ahead and write it down one more time. 10 inverse of 3 minus 10 inverse of 1 half is going to be argument of z minus argument of w. But think about it. You're working with complex numbers. When do you subtract their arguments? When you divide the numbers to find the argument of the quotient, you do subtract the arguments of the numbers. Of course, there is an order. Z has to go on top. So argument of Z over W is the same as argument of Z minus argument of W. Make sense? So we subtract arguments when we divide, right? Cool. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to evaluate Z over W because we know what they are. Look at this. This is Z and this is W. Let's go ahead and divide them. And you might be questioning, like, why? Then I say, why not? <laughs> Let's do it. So 1 plus 3i divided by... 2 plus i, and of course we're going to use conjugates. That's going to be 2 minus i and 2 minus i. Let's go ahead and distribute, and you're going to be surprised, hopefully. 2 plus 3 is going to be 5, and then 6i minus i is going to be 5i plus positive. At the bottom, it's going to be sum of two squares. Remember, when we multiply conjugates, it's going to be 5, and this is 1 plus i. Awesome. And what am I looking at? Argument of z over w. So argument of z over w is the argument of 1 plus i because that's what it is. And 1 plus i is just 1 comma 1. Come on, you know this. It's pi over 4, right? Yes, this is 1. This is i. 1 plus i is represented by this point, And this angle is pi over 4. That's why we get a unique angle because this method is obviously better. Let me know what you think, though. So from here, we're going to get 
the argument of 1 plus i has pi over 4. Therefore, 10 inverse 3 minus 10 inverse 1 half is going to be pi over 4 one more time. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.